It's another day. We're back in. It's freezing cold. We've got the hat on again. Right. Um, I ordered a sea spanner to open the shock absorbers. Right. This is what they've sent me. Tiny. This is what you should have had. So I've had. I mean, look at the state of that. Look. That's about four mil. This is six. That is about as much use as tits on a fish. That's no good. What we needed was a couple of these. The way it works is that hooks in there like that, and then you can rotate that round, and it's a key. Nice and simple. That's how it works. Now, obviously, this one, if you've seen the other video, you'll know is jammed and won't open at all. So, what we're going to try is to get that in there. Hang on a minute. You're going to have to move back. You haven't got a file here, have you? No. Because I've um, mangled the threads a little bit. Because I'll load this will get in there. We're going to need the big lever on it. Right, move back. Let me get this on. Right, let me know. Let's get a bit more. Now, because because I've had the blue still on it. What damage it there, you see? Not a problem. I will put it in that way. And then while this is off, I'll file it. Let's get it right. I'll leave it, you all do it. Fucking angle's wrong. <clears throat> okay. It wouldn't come off, so... There's the camera. Cut it off. Fucking thing. We've tried everything. We've tried heat. We've tried oil. Just, just wouldn't budge. So, couldn't resist the axle. Now this one here, look, should, so it was a minute ago, that'll turn, let me just get that operating device, this one will turn in, with the hand pressure, so, what I'll do, there you go, that's what we're after, is I'll get on the internet, and I'll find a new set of these rings. Now these are a slightly different design from mine because, let me just explain, these have two that lock up together. On mine it's a bit thicker. It's got a grub screw in it with an Allen key in. So that once it's in place, you just tighten the Allen key. And that's what locks it in place. Obviously these just... Slightly older design, which locks oh, one 
begin to get. I mean, it's still tight as hell, but. As you can see, it's coming off. Not the easiest job in the world. <laughs> and I've got six of these buggers to do. So, obviously because I've got the front of the car in bits. What I want to do, take, what I want to do is take the first two, take the two front ones down to a powder coated and have them shot blasted powder coated and um oh, that one just slipped out of there and then I can rebuild me what do we call it rebuild my suspension Oh my god, I hate your hands like you wouldn't believe. I'll turn this off because you don't need to see me struggling for another five minutes. Morning everyone, me paint's dry. Um, what we're going to do today is reassemble the hubs. So we're going to put the discs back on these, put us all back together and I'm going to rebuild the front suspension today. Won't take long, it's pretty straightforward. Get the calipers back on replumb the brake lines and the postman's just been and delivered me a nice shiny new swale pot so if i get time i'll put it in place and just explain how that's going to work but for now we found a knife what we're going to do is we're going to put the discs on the back of the hub get that set up and um yeah get the ball rolling now brand new brake discs or rotors, the Americans call these rotors, brake disc rotors. Let me just move the camera down so you can see what's going on. Don't need to look at my sexy noggin. Okay, let me just move that round a bit. There you go. So, a brand new brake disc, when it comes in from the factory, it has a protective oil on it, and it's important that you get that oil off, because otherwise your brakes aren't going to work. But for now, I'm going to leave the oil on while I reassemble. What I'm going to do, right, is you're going to leave the disc like that in the carrier bag, purely because I've got crap all over the bench and I don't want to contaminate the discs with all this old paint and stuff. Um, so... I'm going to do the other one first, right, because that's the offside. I know it's the offside because I left that little cable tie on it. So I'm going to do this one. So what we'll do... Well, let's get the bloody... Let's move these calipers out of the way. Because the calipers... <coughs> on top of my socket set. If I remember rightly, it's that one. Yep, it is. So, as I say, these are only in finger tight, but it's cold. So everything's contracted. Yeah, you can feel the resistance just on that bolt there. But like I said, when we strip this down, if you keep all your nuts and bolts together and then if it's an assembly like this, put them back in, you're not going to lose them. What I used to do is when I'd strip stuff down, I'd just throw all the bolts in a bucket or a, a tray or something and you go, hang on, which one goes here, what goes there? 
Um, if you're doing a modern European car, right, everything on it is going to be metric, as in M12, and if it's Japanese stuff, it's all metric. So you're going to have like 10 mil or 12 mil or even 13 mil bolts. So you can do the whole car with just a couple of different spanners. But Jags were made 70s and 80s in England, so you've got a combination of UNF and UNC, which is either fine threads or coarse threads. I can't remember what the UN stands for, I don't know. But similar to the American stuff, instead of having a 13 mil spanner or 13 mil socket, you might need an half inch. The difference is only, if I remember rightly, 0.2 of a millimetre or 0.4 of a millimetre, but it's, um, it's as close as fucking as the swear, I don't know if you say. Pop that one there, yeah, that last one. Nice and loose. That bit of tape I've put on there, look. That's just to stop any little bits of rubbish getting down into like where the bearings go. And obviously in there it's all clean. We're gonna pack it with fresh grease anyway before we reassemble it. So that will basically just go in there like that. And again, because I don't want this covered in cash. Turn it over. Line up my holes, which you can't see, but I can. And then from there, drop the bolts in and tighten them up. So you get everything finger tight first. You know everything's lined up. So I told you, nice and simple to reassemble these. But once it's all back together, we've got brand new. Um, what do we call? It? We've got brand new brakes all round. So it's not going to make much difference size-wise to the old discs, because the old discs weren't that bad. It's just, um, well, if you do a something, you'll do a proper end, so brand new brakes all the way around. I'll tighten these up, the, what do we call these, the springs have been off to the powder coaters. So we'll have the springs back in a couple of days so I can rebuild the suspension. So I've got a trick which I'll show you to help me move the car around. Because if I just reassemble the suspension and don't put the shock absorbers on, because there's no springs, the car will just bottom out and sit on the floor. So I need to make up some little spaces and put them in place where the shocky should be, just so I can turn the car around. Okay, so there's the disc on. But I need to tighten them up. Now, with the old disc, which I haven't got, but it's on an old video, what we did, we clamped the disc in the vise and then we, um, just move that up a bit, yeah we clamped the disc in the vise, we've got a great big bar on it, we got loads of torque, <coughs> and we were able to leave it and twist it off, now, I can't do that to tighten them up, for the simple reason, if I clamp a brand new disc <coughs> in the vise, What's called the gnarled edges here. <coughs> what they'll do is they'll mark the face of the disc. So, if this will reach, we'll just get these tight. See, that's not going to reach. I need a smaller extension bar. I haven't got one. What size is that? No, okay, that's a... Is it 15? What have we got in that set? 15, 17, 19. No, it's okay. I'm going to have to use the extension. 
Alright, so what we'll do, we'll get this in the other half. We'll give it a bloody good reaction. And what I could do is make up a couple of what we call soft jaws. Which I'm going to do anyway. Because obviously you have to make these up. Now I've had my torque wrench with me. I'd torque all these up. But I haven't it in my garage. So basically it's just tighten them. For this as tight as you can get them by hand. Yeah, I'm not going to get that anymore. So, bit of timber. Just, just knock that in half. There you go. I knew that karate would come in handy for something. Now, if I make a sandwich like this, okay. now that's not light. I might need. There you go. So, what we've got now is the timber between the jaws of the vise and the disc that'll hold it nice and solid. And I know I'm not going to risk damaging the face of the disc with the, there you go, with the vice. You all right, mate? Thinking about the tool wrench. It's been that long since I built it, I couldn't remember the torque settings anyway, so you just do a TAF, which means tight as fuck. Now we've got a hub assembly, brand new disc, the main hub, and the thingy plate <coughs> dispater. Now I'm going to take this off because that's not sitting very flush. So now I'll explain what I'm doing. I'll just <coughs> cut this short because you already got for the 10 minutes to see what that's all about. You don't need to watch all this, so I'll put this off. Right, what we're gonna do is rebuild the suspension for today. If you remember from a few videos back, we put all this paper on to protect the half shaft while we rubbed it all down. That's all been cleaned. So it's all cleaned and sexy. So what we're gonna do is just give it a wipe, get rid of these little bits of 
clean film that'll stuck on. Give it a little wipe round, re-grease it all, put us all back together. So cap comes off. Now before we start, how big was that the most? I can't remember. That's not the one. Right, the socket we're looking for adds about 24 mil. So Rings we need a bell. To find that. What? Rings a bell, that's 24. I've got a feeling it's either in it or down there on the floor because it's not in the box. Oh yeah, it's, it's over there. Oh, yeah. On the uh, thing, hold this when I get there. Is that on pause? Is it? Uh, go back. Right, back again. This is grease. So what you do, push your little washer down, and it comes out like that, like a nice big fat slug. So all you do is just put loads of the stuff on here, rub it all around. Now these hubs actually have a grease nipple on them, but because the hubs have got spacers on which I'll show you in a minute, you've seen the spacers, the silver ones, right, because of the way the space has been made, they actually cover the grease nipple, so the grease nipple is inside there under that spacer, so you can't put a grease nipple on. So, <clears throat> bit of a pain in the bum. It's not a problem. All we do, lube up your hole. Basically, yeah, just lube your hole up and grease your shaft. Yeah, give you give your ring a good greasing, <laughs> <laughs> and away you go. You never have too much. You know what they say: the wetter, the better. So, I'm not worried right now if I've got grease on the disc because it's all got to be cleaned anyway. And that can go in there. And then it's just a question of sliding the disc back on the shaft. Now, then your other bearing goes in. So we're going to put oops, a bit more grease on this bearing and obviously if you're wearing a pair of gloves it just keeps your hands clean. I know that's not, that isn't right on there for some reason. Can you see at the back why that's not on? There's a bit of paper stuck in there. <laughs> Welcome back out. There you go. There you go. And that'll spin nice. Now she she'll the grease look finger mark on there on the disc itself. I've got a big half gallon or a gallon of thinners there, so I'll clean all that right off. Right, so that's nice and compacted. Grease. Then you put your big washer on. Then your nut goes on. Obviously be careful here not to cross thread this. There you go. Right now, get as much of this off my hands as I can. Is that other roll of wipes over there? Which one, the blue roll? Any roll, just the blue roll's on a windscreen of the van. Oh shit, yeah. Left it there yesterday. It's just to get as much of this green. There you go. We back on? Yep. Okay, like I say, this is just to get. I want you to get these me gloves as it can, just so I can hold the bloody tools up and slipping out. So, tighten this nut up. And then with your socket, just wind it up. You can see the giddy Susan out. Now, if you tighten it right up, it goes tight. 
obviously once you've got all the grease into the bearings again that noise will disappear and then what we do we just back it off like a quarter of a turn so there's no play in it but it spins nice and free now from there put that crown up back on like that and then it'd be tempting here to use the old um, split pin but we're not what we're going to do put a brand new split pin in there and then put the just top back on so well actually these are a bit limp I might have to this down so you just got to find the hole again there these are a bit long these I might have to trim this down and literally just bend that around like that and then bend this one either way they are a bit long these split pins but it's not a major problem as long as it's inside the hub it'll be okay and then there is your little hub cap that goes on there so what I'll do again just for a little bit of extra I'll put good jollop of grease in there and that'll keep the whole thing lubed up and then what we do is once you've rebuilt it we do a few miles on it there you go you see that coming out there then So once you've done a few miles on it, we'll take it apart, check it all, and if it needs tightening up a little bit, we tighten it up a little bit. So that there is how we do that, all nice and tight, all nice and new. Just get the, mat, the most of that off there. I say it's all got to be cleaned off with the thinners in a minute anyway. But now the next job is to refit the calipers so if you want to press pause right I've put the caliper on um, I've just got one bolt in for now just to hold it just to take the weight so I've put this arm on connect up the steering rack and put the brake pads in and bleed the brakes but before I can bleed the brakes I've got to make a new brake pipe so I like to say this is that first bolt there is just to hold it in place it's all nice and loose so that goes on that way now there's a bolt goes through the back which will be that long one there all right so that goes through there through the caliper and i just felt that then biting and now that's bolting into the upright which is fine but I'm not sure whether you can see there's a gap here. Can you see that gap? No, Let me point at it with something. Just down there. You've got to put spacers in. Which is why we've got all these washers. So, I'm just going to take a guess that it's these two. Because I seem to remember. Two coming out. Oh, I think that's two. Let's just try one of them. Right, and then there's a small bolt goes in there. Let's bite it into the upright if you can. Right, there you go, line it up. 
There you go. Mm -hmm. Good your eyes, is that? Can't you fuck all of them, yeah? You might have to come. Yeah, you will. Right, so now I remember the spaces go in the middle. Because I've just felt it. So that bolt goes there like that. That middle one, that bottom one, comes out of there. And then the spacers go behind it. Now, just drop the washer there, look. So this is where the fun starts. I remember seeing a big one and a, and a little skinny one. You have to go through there. Get the washers on. Fucking problem is it where I'm back the front. You need to have that out of us. Is it a big one go? Oh, is there? That's one of the bonuses, or not bonuses, one of the problems with working on carpets. It's comfy on your ass, Dad. but you can't anyway, not for us. What? Do you think we should play maybe the pram or this grey one? Grey one. Oh, you think you should do what? Yeah, yeah. There you go, that's back in. Yep. You just nip them all off, they're not going to go super tight until everything has been checked. I'm out of the grass out of my garage. Yeah. I think it's on the wall up there. Just to give these up. Um, when you're putting something under heavy load, use a cracking bar instead of your ratchets because you can if you've got a pair of muscles in your arms and if you've got fucking cheap tools, you can take the teeth out the ratchet. There you go. How's that? Sexy! There you go. One brake disc assembly rebuild. Push that all the way so I can go to the shaft at the back. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something to look for. Just here is the brake bleed nipple. If you take both calipers off, when you put them on, make sure you put the nipple at the top. If I had to put the other one on it, basically that one would be upside down. And then when you bleed it, the fluids will come in and then back out. 
So you're only bleeding one half the caliper, so the other half will have air in it. Um, and that's why your brakes won't work or will be spongy. Or, we're still, because I learned the hard way by doing it wrong, is you'll knacker up your caliper and you have to go and have them reconditions. And for this jag, if I remember rightly, do it about £200 each. So, right, pass us that uh, cracking bar, please, lads. Somewhere in my garage, I've got a roll of stainless steel locking wire. You might notice in these nuts, these little holes there. See them? See them holes? Oh, yeah. What you do is once you've done everything, it's all done, you can put wire through it, locking wire, and um, you twist it up, and that way it'll stop your, your bolts ever coming out and working loose. But obviously it needs to be stainless steel, so it doesn't corrode. So that's a job for later on. There you go. So, the only thing left to do on this now is the track rod end. So we'll put the track rod end on for the steering. But I've got to replace Right. I've got to replace them rubber gaiters, so I'm not going to do it up tight, I'm just going to nick it up enough so as we can steer it, because what I want to do is turn it round and obviously start working on the back end. But what we'll do is we'll just nick up that track rod end. To be honest, you want a spanner? No, I think I've got an extension bar here. There you go, I really want it. I think it's nice, it's not even turned, but. That's enough now anyway, to be able to turn it. Now the only thing I've got to do with this is put the brake pads in, but before we do that, I've got to clean all both sides of the disc down with a bit of thinners, make sure there's no grease or oil on it. So we'll reassemble the other side first, and then um, we can do that in a minute. Yep. All right. I can pause that now. Right. Near side now, passenger side. You see me do the other one, I'm not going to waste your time. We'll do a time lapse on this. You've seen how it goes together. So, first things first, clean all this old grease off. <laughs> 